Right, so this is a video where I provide you a proof that the formulas I gave for the vector and scalar products are correct. Um, so let me just briefly go through it. So suppose you've got, in some orthonormal basis, I've got the vectors v and w with components vx, vy, vz, wx, wy, wz. And suppose I define some function, f of v and w, like this, which is how I told you the scalar product is. And I define a vector function u of v and w like this, which is what I told you the vector product is. Then I want to prove now that this function here is the same as the scalar product. In other words, it's equal to length of v, length of w, cos theta. And I want to show that this function here is equal to the vector product. In other words, I want to show that its length is length v, length w, sine theta, that it's perpendicular to v and w, and that it satisfies this right-hand rule for selecting the direction of the vector u. Okay. So I want to show that this is equal to this, and that this satisfies these three properties. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to prove it completely because the complete proof is um, quite difficult. So I'm going to show a partial proof. What this means is I'm going to prove this is true, provided that I am free to choose the orthonormal basis that I want. So I claim that these functions, f, v, w, and u, v, w, are independent of the choice of orthonormal basis. Okay, this is true, um, and I will prove this, but in order to prove this, it's much easier if you know something about matrices, which is going to be the topics for the next few weeks. So in a couple of weeks, I'll do a video where I prove this claim that these functions here are independent of the choice of basis. But for now, just believe me that this is true. And assuming this is true, I will prove to you that these two formulas are right. So this claim is quite useful because it allows us to choose the basis to make the problem easy. And in particular, if you suppose that you've got the vectors v and w or something like this, I can always choose my basis such that the first basis vector i is parallel to v. Okay. And then I can choose the second basis vector j to be in the same plane as v and w, such that w has a positive j component. OK, so let me just write that up here. So we choose basis. So in three dimensions, you have to be in three dimensions for this to work. So you prove the basis i, j, k, such that So the first property is that i is parallel to v. The second property is that w is in the i, j plane with positive j component. component. OK. So that makes this problem much simpler, you see, because then we know that v is just equal to parallel to i, so it must just be equal to the length of v times the basis vector i. Okay. So as a vector, then, this is length of v, 0, 0. Okay. Because it points in the direction of i, and it has length equal to the length of v. And similarly, w then, if this angle here is theta, 
which is what it is in these formulas here, theta. Then we can say that W is equal to, just using trigonometry, this is W cos theta. So it's W cos theta times I plus W sine theta times J plus because we assumed it's in the positive J direction. So as a vector, I ran out of space. Okay. So as a vector, W is equal to W as a column vector, I mean, W cos theta, W sine theta, zero. So the the utility, the usefulness of this claim is it allows me to choose a basis such that I know V is equal to this and W is equal to this. And if this is true, then it's quite easy to check that these two formulas are correct. So let's do that now. Okay, so just to write the conclusion, then V is length of V, 0, 0. W is W cos theta, W sine theta, 0. Okay, so let's just check. So this function f of v and w, so that's defined as this times that plus this times that plus this times that. So this is just v times w cos theta, which is length of v, length of w cos theta, which is indeed equal to the scalar product. Yeah. So that just takes the first one. Okay. Second one is a bit more hard. Let's look at the length first. So the length of u v w. So this is. So let me bring down the definition of u again here. Okay. So this is the length of the vector. So here I've got v z w y minus y. That's zero. Here I've got this, which is also zero. And here I've got Vx Wy, which is that times that. Okay. Minus Vy Wx, which is also zero. So I have that. Okay. Go away. Which is equal to length of V, length of W, sine theta. Okay, so that's right. So it's got the right length, this vector. Next, we have to check that it's perpendicular to V and W. So U is 0, 0, length V, length W, sine theta. And you can easily check, right, then from here and here, U dot V is 0, and U dot W is 0 because both of them have zeros in the final place. So this means that u is perpendicular to v, and u is perpendicular to w. That's true. And the final thing you have to check is the right-hand rule. And, well, as I've drawn it here, let's just check that. Suppose, then, here's my ij plane. i, j, k coming out like this. Okay, and then the vector v, as I drew it here, is like this, v. The vector w had positive j component, that's important, so w is like this. Okay, and you can see that the vector product then, using the right-hand rule, should be pointing in this way. Okay, which means it should have positive k component. Okay, and indeed here, sine theta, theta is less than 180 degrees, so sine theta is positive, so this is positive, so therefore it is pointing in the right direction. So the right-hand rule is also okay. Okay, so that completes the proof. We've checked that um, this function, which was vx wx plus vy wy, 
plus VDV WZ is equal to the scalar product. And we've checked that this vector function here is equal to the vector product by checking it satisfies the three, sorry, checking it satisfies the three definition properties of the vector product. Okay, so the only thing I haven't proved is this claim that it doesn't matter what orthonormal basis you choose. And as I said, this claim I will prove in a couple of weeks once we've developed some of the theory of matrices.